There is no denying the fact that gimbals are incredible pieces of technology that can help you to get some incredible shots when used correctly. How they work and what they do will forever blow my tiny little mind, mainly because I've got a very small brain and I don't understand how things like that work. But the question has to be asked, do you really need a gimbal? I'm not so sure anymore. I bought this Zayun Weebill S, I think that's how you say it, Zayun, Zayun, and I just don't use it. It sits there on my windowsill gathering dust. Can't remember the last time I used it. In fact, that is a slight lie. I used it just the other day, but not in the way that you might expect. I used it to try and persuade a wasp out of the window. And that is no word of a lie. That is genuinely true. Annoying little things, wasps. This is much less the case than it used to be. And even since I bought this a few years ago, gimbals have improved when it comes to this, but they are still incredibly fiddly and I just have no fun at all trying to balance them. Sliding bits around and locking different motors and making sure your camera is balanced on each motor and then you'll forget to lock a motor and it will slide off and you'll have to start all again and it just becomes a little bit of a pain and when you're out on a shoot that is the last thing you want to be doing again i know the newer ones are much better at this i use the rs3 at work and that has auto locks and it's much quicker and easier to balance than this but even so when i'm out shooting i don't want to be faffing around trying to balance a camera on a gimbal i just want to be shooting Adding to the fact that they are so fiddly, they just take so much time to get set up. There's so many different parts to them. You've got the mounting plates, there's a plate that goes on the mounting plate, you've got the tripod legs. If you're using a DJI gimbal, you've got the battery, and then you've got to balance it and all of that nonsense. And when it comes to a shoot and you've maybe only got an hour or two to get that shoot done, it's still valuable time setting up that gimbal that you could be using to shoot more footage for your videos for your client. Filming videos is a long process. It takes a long time. When you add in faffing around with a gimbal, it's not something I want to do if I can help it. I don't mean this in the sense that they might be too big or too heavy, although that might be the case depending on your rig and the camera you're using on the gimbal. It can weigh an absolute ton. This one, weighs barely anything. I mean it in a more creative sense. I find that 95% of the time when I'm out shooting, I get much better footage when I'm shooting handheld or with a tripod than when I'm using a gimbal. I find myself thinking more creatively about the different angles I can shoot and where I can put the camera. Maybe it's trying to squeeze it into a smaller gap that if it's on a gimbal, it's not gonna fit whereas handheld, it might do. And because of that, if I am shooting with a gimbal, I do find myself feeling sometimes quite limited with the shots I can get because I find myself thinking less creatively. There's also the added thing of having to carry around with you an extra bit of gear. And as we know, as filmmakers and videographers, there is already a lot to be taking with you to different shoots. You've got your cameras, you've got your lenses, microphones, lights, filters, tripods. There's a lot to remember. A gimbal is gonna be the last thing I put on my list to take with me. And when you think as well that you might only use the gimbal for maybe a shot or two, is it worth carrying around with you at all? A lot of the time I'd say no, because as I mentioned before, I find myself thinking more creatively about how I can achieve that shot. Maybe it's with using an extra camera that I can then cut between. It's just different ways around it. And I know which way I prefer to work. When you're shooting handheld without a gimbal, your footage can actually become a lot more immersive and make it so the viewer feels more engaged with what they are watching. And the reason for that is because if you just have a static gimbal shot, it can actually make the viewer feel a little bit detached from the footage because there's not a lot happening. Whereas if it is handheld, it almost makes them feel like they are if there's a conversation going on, for example, between two people, it almost makes them feel a little bit more part of that conversation. Also with gimbals, you fall into the trap of always trying to move the camera 
When you don't necessarily need to, you'll find yourself just walking along and creating movements with the gimbal when you don't need to, and it's adding nothing to your footage. It's probably taking away a lot, to be honest, when sometimes you might even be better off with just a static shot on a tripod. It's just a different way of thinking when you're using a gimbal. You need to know what you're gonna be shooting with the gimbal if you're going to use it, and you need to use it in the right way. I realize this does sound like I've put quite a big downer on gimbals, and that's not the case at all, because they do genuinely have their time and place to be used. And if used correctly, they are very useful, and I would definitely recommend using one if you use it in the right way and you know exactly what you're using it for. For example, a lot of car videos will use gimbals because they're creating nice long tracking shots of cars driving along roads and they're maybe hanging out the back of another vehicle to shoot that car. In that case, you 100% need a gimbal and you're probably going to be using it every single day. A lot of property tour videos as well use gimbals. I make these at work all of the time, pretty much every single day, and we use a gimbal for that. But again, it's only for those wide shots to maybe show off a room and we maybe try and add in some speed ramps to speed up the video a little bit and make it look a little bit more dynamic. In that case, you need a gimbal. But apart from that, I very rarely use a gimbal. I really don't. I don't use it at all for any of my YouTube videos. I'm not sure that the promise of a nice smooth shot outweighs the time and effort required to set it up and carry it around with you everywhere you go. I'm just, it's not something I'm into. I have other ways that I prefer to shoot, unless I 100% need it, which I very rarely do. A lot of the time, there's other ways to achieve similar results or to maybe just be a little bit more creative about what it is that you are filming. As I said before, you're not gonna want to use it on every single shot, even if you make videos where you do need it a lot of the time, like car videos. You're not gonna want to use a gimbal to maybe shoot all of the nice close-up details of the car. It's a little bit like, you know when you buy an f1.2 lens and you're like, wow, this is amazing, and you're so tempted to shoot everything at f1.2 and you have to try everything you possibly can to stop yourself from wanting to shoot everything at f1.2 because you've spent two grand on this lens and you're thinking, I want to get my money's worth, I want to shoot everything at f1.2 and get that depth of field and that creamy bocker and you shouldn't shoot everything at f1.2 because that's just ridiculous. And it's the same with the gimbal. Might be tempting to want to use it all the time if you bought one, but um, don't. Don't do it. I, I don't use them at all. But this one hasn't been used in about two years, apart from shooting that wasp out of the window. So I am actually getting rid of it. I'm sending it to MPB and getting a little bit of money back for it. So uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on gimbals. They have a very specific use case. And apart from that, I don't think it's worth having them. Apart from if you have that very specific use case. I'm gonna stop talking now because I think I've waffled on a little bit too much about it. I hope that makes sense what I was trying to say. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you use gimbals? Are you a fan of them? Are you not? Do they just get in the way? All of that stuff that I've just mentioned, let me know in the comments below and I shall see you in the next video.